Glacier National Park in northwest Montana is a great place to see for yourself that the Earth's climate seems to be warming. In the 1850s, there were at least 150 glaciers in the park. In 2005, there were only 27. Officials will tell you that all of the park's glaciers will be gone by the year 2030. In 2008, I ran into a U.S. Geological Survey team on Grinnell Glacier, and they told me that most of the glaciers wouldn't even last that long. I've never been a big believer in all the fears that are associated with what most believe is man's influence on global warming. But in Glacier National Park, I've seen firsthand that the glaciers are shrinking. I've been visiting the park over Labor Day week nearly every year since 1994. On my first trip, I had to climb over ice blocks to get on Grinnell Glacier. I didn't notice any significant change to the glacier the next year. But by the end of the 90s, it was obvious that the glacier was shrinking. In the last few years, the shrinkage is, well, sadly quite noticeable. Using my photos as a reference and Google Earth to help measure distance, I determined that Grinnell Glacier has melted back about 500 feet between 1994 and 2009. The ice in the park has been melting for hundreds and probably thousands of years. The more than half mile thick glaciers that carved these valleys disappeared 12,000 years ago. For at least the last few millennia, smaller alpine glaciers have built up and shrunk again. So even Al Gore agrees that the shrinking glaciers are nothing new. This average global temperature chart was developed by the U.S. government. It represents ice core data going back 425,000 years. The blue line represents temperature data. The red line represents CO2 levels. Notice that most of the time the Earth is significantly cooler than it is now. But every 125,000 years or so, the Earth gets warmer. These warm cycles are called interglacial periods. We're at the tail of one such warming cycle now. As you can see, there have been many temperature fluctuations in the last 5,000 years or so. So let's take a look at a more detailed chart. This chart displays global temperature data over just the last 4,500 years. There have been several warm and cool periods during this time, and the burning of fossil fuels cannot be blamed for any of the previous warm cycles. There's plenty of photographic evidence that all but a couple of glaciers glaciers are shrinking. The only glacier not shown to shrink since 1938 is Pygen. This is a 1914 photo of Jackson and Blackfoot glaciers. At the time, you couldn't tell one from the other. Today, Jackson is the largest glacier in the park, but it hasn't been connected to Blackfoot for quite some time. This 1900 Glacier National Park archive photo shows Grinnell Glacier still attached to what is now called Salamander Glacier. This 2009 photo shows what's left. The isolated horizontal patch to the right is Salamander. There is now several hundred feet of rock separating the two glaciers. Thanks again to the Glacier National Park archives, it's possible to show just how much ice has melted away from Grinnell in the last 160 years. The lines here show Grinnell's boundaries at various times. In 1850, it was well down the valley. By 1993, it had pulled back considerably. Now let's look at it from above. Here it is in 1938, 1981, 1998, and in 2009. The glacier is definitely melting. Is the cause man-made CO2 emissions, the destruction of the rainforest, or simply the natural cycles of the planet? Well, I don't know. It's probably a bit of one and a bunch of another. To me, it doesn't matter why the ice is melting. I simply know that it is. I shot this video in 1994. There were several large blocks of ice, and even a small ice cave. As this 2010 video shows, the ice is now thinner and flat. The glacier is still over 4,500 feet wide and 12 to 1,700 feet long. At the cliff face, it's still a few hundred feet thick. So will all the ice be gone in less than 20 years? Well, I don't know. But the glaciers might be. The U.S. Geological Survey defines a glacier as an ice mass with a surface area of at least a tenth of a square kilometer along with evidence that the ice is still moving. By that definition, it's not hard to believe that Grinnell will lose its glacier designation in less than 20 years. 
The Earth is always changing. There's plenty of evidence that since the beginning of time, the Earth has been affected by the species which dominated at the time. For most of Earth's life, there was little or no breathable oxygen. A billion years ago, the most advanced species at the time changed that forever. Large colonies of cyanobacteria, better known as blue-green algae, began living and dying in shallow tropical seas. They took in CO2 and gave off oxygen. Oxygen was their waste gas, their pollution. During their reign, their waste gas polluted the atmosphere to a point that they were no longer the dominant species. They changed the planet's atmosphere from one that was rich in CO2 to one that was rich in oxygen. This change influenced the climate, but more importantly, it made the rise of more advanced oxygen-breathing animals possible. As each generation of the bacteria died, they built structures called stromatolites. As it happens, the receding Grinnell Glacier has revealed some well-preserved stromatolite fossils. Hundreds of millions of years ago, this mountaintop was a tropical shoreline. The Earth is always changing, and sometimes Earth creatures, like cyanobacteria or human beings, influence change. But more often than not, far greater forces are at work. Many years ago, this area was much warmer. It was a tropical beach. Today, the glaciers are receding, and I, for one, will be very sorry to see them go. And only time will tell if man has permanently altered Earth's climate cycles. But history predicts that this interglacial period will eventually end. In thousands of years from now, the Earth will return to its more normal, low-temperature state. And ice will again fill these valleys.